What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and we are here at the Nerd Castle with the next episode of Shadowrun Dragonfall. In the previous episode, we had definitely slaughtered up some chummers and you will notice that this episode has 5 million percent more mouse clicker. I noticed in the first couple episodes there was no mouse cursor. It's a very, very strange thing to note and it's because I tried out a new recording software. Probably not the thing I wanted to test a new series on, but I gave it my best go and so there it is. You guys didn't seem to, like, nobody called me out on it and was like, hey, there's no mouse cursor, WTF. So I suppose nothing's hurt. We had just finished annihilating some dudes up in here. We got all up in that grill with the shoddy, pumped it off and just kaplow and took them out. What is this? The maintenance key fob. Hooray, we've got the access to all of the mops and buckets and things. Although, given the nature of this building, it was run by gangs and things like that, so I bet we'll probably be able to get our way into something pretty nice with this key, hopefully. That's what we strive for anyways. Am I still wounded right now? Like, why am I still wounded? I thought you healed after every fight. Let's take a look at this thing here. Yeah, I'm still wounded. Well, can I heal myself or something? I mean, I don't really want to use one of my med kits while we're running around. I don't know. Never mind. Let's see what this... We can't do anything with this console because we don't have a decker yet, but we'll do our best. It says, HR serve hotel registration and security services, navigation options. We can enter a guest register by name. We can search the current guest register by room number, or we can do admin services. I guess we'll search the guest register by name. We'll go Winters. I don't know if it just wants the last name or if it wants the full name. Currently staying on floor 4 in room 405. Fantastic. Oh, there's attached notes. Damn it. Okay, let's go back. We're going to go back. We can do this, I believe, so that we can get all the notes. We're going to do what I don't do in class and take notes here. Guy in the master suite on 4 asked for his room code to be changed again. Paranoid son of a bitch. Anyway, dude's been renting one of our biggest rooms for months, so I guess I shouldn't complain too much. The new code is 1989. It's a pretty good year. I mean, personally, I know people who were born in 1989 that are special to me, and therefore, I feel like that password was probably appropriately selected. What else can we do here? Admin services. We probably have to, like, hack something. I don't know. Let's try... Uh, password? It never hurts. I mean, you can always give it a go. We can do something like crude. I mean, I tend to use crude things as buy passwords all the time just because it's humorous. Then again, it might also be Freudian. Who even knows? Is this going to be the mop closet? Let's see if we can use that key to get up in here. Nay. Well, that's unfortunate. There's not even, like, a maglock or anything that we can fiddle with. I suppose we can just take off and go to a different floor then. We are going to sweep the hell out of this place, and not because we have the maintenance key. I'm just saying, we're going to get everything up out of this bitch. All the treasure will be our treasure. So let's go to... Let's go to third floor hotel. And we'll look around. There are some things left that I wanted to take care of. Room 301's all locked up. What's this right here? Oh, maybe we can... Oh... The note reads, do not open. Well, I wonder how serious they are about that assertion. I mean, when you tell me I can't open something, it really kind of makes me want to open it. I will say that my nickname at the repair shop was Dynamite, because I could take anything apart. You hand me something, and I will take it apart. Quite magnanimously, in fact. I will be able to get that thing apart. It might not have a hatch, it might not have little slots or anything, and I'll get it open. I love disassembling things. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that on the channel before. I absolutely love taking things apart. It's putting them back together that I hate. We've got some cram. That's pretty good, in fact, because we may able to, we can either bribe the hooker downstairs, or we can bribe that other girl who was kind of jonesing for her stuff. Let's take a look throughout the entire place. I want to make sure we don't get flanked and annihilated in the hallways if we open up any of the doors. So I just want to make absolutely 100% sure that we're safe from every different direction before I go anywhere. I do like how all the areas are seamless right now. That's a big upgrade from the first game that's really got me sort of happy about the way this thing turned out. It's a teddy bear. We can steal the teddy bear? Well, hell yeah, we're going to steal the teddy bear. Why not? Silky's encoded cred stick. Oh, this is her stuff from her room. Okay. So we've got Silk's teddy bear. And Silk signed cookbook. That's weird. Can I look at that in my inventory? Hold on. Mission items. An encoded cred stick. It's a high-end model with strong cryptography. Okay. Okay. And a signed copy of Kitchen Magic Made Easy by Kashel Tarara, host of the popular cooking show Kashiel's Awakened Kitchen. The recipes inside all make heavy use of magically active ingredients. Weird. I get the feeling that's probably not what it's used for here in this case, given her occupation as a junkie. But <laughs> I'm not going to ask too many questions. 
appear to have like a Who Framed Roger Rabbit poster on the wall. Haven't seen one of those in a while. And I always stop because the game doesn't make lootable nodes available to you unless you stop running around. It makes them disappear. So let's see what's going on on this side. It looks like the floor has collapsed slightly. The floor at this end of the room is beginning to cave in. A trickle of light spills up through the cracks in the floorboards from another room below. With a little force, you could probably open a big hole enough to drop down to the second floor from here. Hell yeah, let's do it! There was a bunch of rooms we couldn't get into on the last floor. <laughs> Did we kill a guy? Oh shit. Did we fall? <laughs> We've committed manslaughter. I don't think that's going to work out in our favor. Please don't hurt me. I'm just a line cook. The cook's darting eyes are wide open, and behind them you see pure animal terror. If you let me go, I won't tell anyone. I promise. What are you so afraid of? Wait, you're not with the guys out there? Oh, well. I just thought... You just thought what? I thought you were one of them. You know, like the gangsters that took over and shot up the place. I work... That is to say, I worked for the previous owners. When the shooting started, I shut myself in here. They, whoever they are, haven't figured out how to override my keys yet. It's been a day and a half, and I don't know how much longer I can stay in here. Who's the stiff by the sink? That's the head chef, Felix. He took a hit to the chest when they raided the floor. I thought I could stop the bleeding, but, uh... The cook lowers his gaze to the floor at his feet. I couldn't. Well... I could say intelligence, but I guess I'm not smart enough. I didn't realize my intelligence was so low. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, thanks. Tell me anything you can about this place. Okay, uh, well, I think there's some sort of a chop shop up in room 401, like low-level street dock stuff. I delivered room service there one day when we were short-staffed, and what I saw opened the when I opened the door scared the dreck out of me. People hooked up to tubes and stuff. The door code was 5870 if you want to take a look. Alright, I need to get moving, thanks. Wait, you'll, you'll help me out of here, won't you? I mean, you're not just going to leave me to die here, right? I took care of the guys outside. You should be able to make a run for it. Thank you. I'm as good as gone. Alright, so there's our good deed for the day. I didn't actually take care of anybody on this floor as far as I can tell, but... We're on floor two. Let's have a look around and see if there's any treasure around, because you never know. Holding still for a bit and pressing my out key, it doesn't appear as though there's anything in this room for us to loot up and stuff into our pockets. Wait, what just opened down here? I feel like he tried to open the wall right there. It's kind of a weird situation. We've also got... A terminal over here. Maybe this will be for the maintenance key that we've got. It was. Cool. So let's get ourselves the hell out of here. I guess we're in the laundry room. This laundry room's a little bit spacious. And not a lot of machines either. Seems like my laundry room. My laundry room always has way too many people in it. There's not nearly enough machines. It is weak. It is super, super weak. The landlady knows that like 900 people live in this complex, and yet there's only like 8 machines to wash your clothes. Ridiculous! Especially considering the amount of rent they charge. One thing that I've come to notice, the closer in proximity you are to a college, the more rent they charge you because they know that like most people are on loans and just be like, whatever, and they won't argue about it. It sucks, but having lived like in a really, really hood apartment that was really, really cheap and then moving here, it's kind of a kick in my, it's, it's a kick in my accounting groin. Let's go back up to the third floor. We got a bunch of keys for the fourth floor, which leaves us in good shape. And having them seen, or having seen now that they don't want me to go into 302, I'm going to leave that alone for just a second. I don't think I tried this door down here yet, but it did have a panel, as I recall. This is a scratched and dented bathroom door locked with a simple hydraulic locking mechanism. A numbered entry keypad glows softly on the door frame. I have no idea. I mean, you could try the obvious stuff, but... A lot of people do stuff like this, too. Or like that. I, I read a bunch of... My bad, we need to go like that. I read a bunch of articles on how to hack key codes back when I was related to IT. And it turns out that you can actually, with about 20% efficiency, you can get into just about anybody's account by entering like 25 different passwords. There was a list that I found online from another IT guy that was a list of the top 25 most used passwords. And they surprisingly worked very well. Let's see what happens. They don't tell... Oh, that's a giant score. So now we've got Rad Scorp... Oh, with Rad Scorpions with AoEs. That is horrifying. Is it going to do that every single time I take it? No, it's just going to be when I activate them the first time. Snipe it! That thing is super scary. I don't deal with giant arachnids. I'm going to take the burst shot. Is he down? 
All right. However, that does leave me softened up. So they just closed the door. A giant scorpion busts into your apartment. You don't say anything. You just lock the door and leave a note. His food is in the crisper drawer. See you next week, Steven. <laughs> is that a doggy bed for the scorpion? Are you kidding me right now? What? <laughs> this game. I don't see anything worth looting. It looks like he's got some kind of like painting desk over here for his Warhammer 40k figurines. I mean, that's what my painting desk looked like. It's just like a bunch of super awesome lights over a multi-tier desk so that I could paint things. That seems kind of pointless to me. I don't really feel like there was a lot of point breaking the door down and shooting anybody. I do think we should probably make use of whatever extra kit we have. I can cycle through people and as I recall, you can't use that. Wait, can was the activate button there? No. Weak. He's not cybered up. I guess we can use some of these med kits since we don't have a choice. Let's use it on Glory. Yeah, I mean, when we go into the next combat, I'll try and heal people as best as I can. But right now, we've got a couple people that are looking a little bit shabby, if I do say so. Which, obviously, I do because I just said it and I've had this diatribe before on the channel. To the fourth floor hotel! Let's move. Let's do this thing. Let's see what's rowdy in the jungle here. So 401, I think is where it said Green Winners was staying. So let's have a look-see. Oh, they're going to make me remember the codes? So that wasn't it. It was 58-something. Is it 58-70? Let's try that. God, I'm surprised that I remembered that off the top of my head. I usually can't remember anything like that. Oh, God, he's got a bat. I hate being a mage and being the first one in. It is really, really scary to me. We're going to swap her weapon out for the shotgun so that we can get Buck in here. And Buck Buck. Much like a chicken, my gun makes the same sound. And down he goes. I'm going to take Glory. And she's going to be my tank. I mean, she's so heavily cybered up. I don't see anybody overwatching this room. And we haven't unlocked Overwatch either. There's somebody right there. I'm going to get her into position. Is that a major ley line right there? I think it is. That one's got a big circle around it. I'm going to move to here. And it might be a good idea to heal somebody. I mean, it's not going to let me because the damage was received in the last combat, so I guess whatever. We will go air barrier, possibly. And I get to place five of them. All right. Well, they could use those against me if they're smart about it. I'll put them, like, right there. Do I have to use all of them? Oh, interesting. Wait, how does this work? Hold on, let me cancel that. Let me figure out exactly how this works, because as I understand, set five light cover barriers that last three rounds. Anyone that enters takes one AP damage. Anyone, or is it to friendlies? I'm kind of scared. We'll test it out while there's not a lot of danger around. So I'll put a couple down, like so. And we'll just kind of see what happens. Dietrich, go stand in that. Okay, so it does hurt friendlies. Man, everybody's too good at throwing in this game. Makes me sad. Now that it's our turn again, I'm going to invoke the bear. To get our health back. And you can see that that ability is definitely incredibly useful by comparison to a lot of the other abilities in the game. I need to get her AP pump going. I forgot about it. So AP pump, go! And then Dietrich, since he's been minus one AP'd, we're going to have him use haste on her. So now that she's at 4 AP, she's going to rush the position, or 2 AP, I apologize, got my numbers wrong here, and one shot it, that girl is done, she is done like dinner. My character, it looks like we got Organ Legger, okay, so an Organ Legger, there's somebody that they kidnap people and they chop their organs out, like this lady right here who apparently didn't keep an eye out, or she ended up with an eye out after not keeping an eye out for trouble. Yep, trying to make bad puns, I've got Cram, wow, you get a lot of AP from Cram. You got some crazy AP. I'm going to assume that's like an amphetamine. I think they said that. It was a designer amphetamine in the last episode. But I don't remember things very well, so. I'm going to have Dietrich trigger all these. Oh, man, that's not Dietrich. That's the wrong guy. I hate my life sometimes. Balls. Sending her to smoke everybody out. It doesn't look like there's anybody to be smoked out. She's got a lot of AP. 
So it might be worthwhile just to put some DACA on this guy. Oh, he's got an assault rifle. Okay. Get behind some cover. I thought he was going to have a melee weapon since he was a surgeon or something. Oh, there's two of them in there. All right. So that leaves us with Dietrich. I'm going to have Dietrich... Team's a little spread out right now. Can't take a shot from right there. So I can see this ability being really useful if you want to seal yourself in. So for example, if we had come into the room this way, and like 80 guys had come through this way, putting the barriers down on the door, like three thick, would be a really, really good plan. But this is not the greatest ability for open air. I guess you could encircle yourself slightly with it. But it basically, it restricts your movement while restricting the enemy's movement at the same time, so you gotta be careful with it. I'm gonna have him heal her wound. Because that 10 is not something that I want to field. And getting him behind some cover would probably be an intelligent move. Dietrich's up next. I'm going to put him behind some cover too, a little bit closer. And he can throw out a dagger with his aim shot? Or actually, let's do a bladed distraction. And I'm, I'm not positive. what I thought that lowered his AP, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I wasn't paying attention properly. And so that leaves her with a little bit... Oh, he's in cover, so we're going to need to flank. There it is. Oh, she moved two for that. So she's got four AP. So her having four AP is a really, really good thing for us. I'm going to have her move to here. And she's just going to open up on this guy, even though he's still got a pretty good dodge chance. So having run up on him and just going blocka, blocka, blocka right upside that head. Caught him slipping. He's now down. We need to loot up this room and figure out what's going on. I'm sure, I'm sure we're going to get some medical supplies or something out of here. And a schematic auto-injector. What is that? I like how this game actually has stuff that I have to look at and pay attention to. Okay, so 405 was 1989. This one was 50. I'm really still... so I'm still baffled. I am absolutely baffled that I remembered that. Where is... Maybe it's in my inventory? Let's find out. Where is this auto-injector at? I don't see anything. I need to swap his weapon out. That weapon is not doing it for me anymore. I don't know if he's got throne skill or something. I may have to pay attention a little bit better. But that knife is just not... I'm not feeling it. Absolutely not feeling it. An advanced med kit. I'll take it. Those things are expensive. Let's have another look around. I didn't see anything trigger in here when we walked into it. But since we were in the middle of combat, we may be able to trigger something now. Holding down the out key, but I don't see anything happening, so let's get on out of here. Got our first combat done. I'm happy. This is a good episode. Any episode where we have a lot of war tongue. It sounds like a tongue that's particularly violent with like a mace on the end of it. Or like a, <laughs> a tongue that's capable of wielding a morning star. It's the war tongue. Cavalier frag grenade. It's a frag grenade that you simply cannot take to a fancy party. And how many times am I going to use that joke? It's a, <laughs> it's a frag grenade that's very, very forward. He has no problem telling you what's wrong with your life. 405Zs, that's the one that we've got the key to. And that's going to be, I'm guessing all of these rooms are going to be a joint and this is going to be a big old combat scenario. So let's look elsewhere before we go any further. I don't want to get in any trouble. Can I activate this fuse box at all? There's nothing I can do there. Let's check the bathroom too. I don't want to get flanked. If we get stuck outside the door, we get stuck outside the door. But I'm going to do it on my terms rather than theirs. Because I'm an assertive asshole like that. 403, not accessible. I'm disappointed by how many rooms are locked. It's making me morose. It's making me feel very, very... Oh, I don't know. Lugubrious. And 1989. I'm going to do this from cover, actually. I'm going to do this from over here because you can trigger these from an angle. I wish I could rearrange everybody. I could start combat now and rearrange everybody the way that I... Can I? Let's try it out. Let's figure out if we can start combat now. Is there any way to kick off combat right this second? Because I would love to arrange people like, who would stand like this before breaching? Like, that's just a terrible idea. We're supposed to be professionals here. I guess we can't. Looking around, we'll submit the code. And commence the bad things happening. Me? Yeah. I'm just going to peek slightly. I bet Green Winners is going to be dead or something. That's going to be the M. Night Shyamalama Limelon twist. 
couple mainframes over here, or we're gonna get our Decker. I know I looked at some of the press releases for this game, and there's a character that we're missing that I'm gonna replace Dietrich with. Ooh, that dude's fried. No fun to be him. When your brain smokes like that, probably a really bad day to be you. Brain's not supposed to smoke. I mean, in general, your lungs aren't supposed to smoke either, but I get it. I like cigarettes every now and again. But it's still bad for you. Even worse, for your brain. The scene is eerily familiar. The dead man is still jacked into his smoldering computer, his face contorted into a mask of pain. Blue smoke spills from his data jack. Just like Monica. And there's something else. The man's outline is wrong. It takes a moment for the realization to sink in. His back is bent at an impossible angle. Jesus. Looks like he convulsed hard enough to break his own spine. Is that even possible? Glory gestures at the twisted form on the carpet. You tell me. Iger kneels beside the corpse, bending to peer at his face. Matches the description that Altug gave us. It's green winners. She straightens, glancing back over at the body before returning her attention to you. This would happen to Monica? I suspect that it would have. We jacked her out in time to prevent it. <laughs> so I can be a smartass here. I can be like, too bad he didn't have a buddy to jack him out. He'd be just fine. Hell of a way to go. I think I'm just going to say, I'm not going to... Honestly, she's a troll and she's really good at sniping. And so I feel like she's probably a good person to have not on our shit list. Hell of a way to go. Yeah, I'm getting that. Iger takes another glance at the broken corpse and you can see the uncertainty growing in her eyes. I've seen biofeedback deaths before. Never seen anything like this. Kneeling to inspect the body, you find smears of blood on the carpet under Winter's right arm. Moving the arm aside, you find a number written across the floor. 91612. You use your PDA to take a hollow pick of the number and then the body. You step away. Well, there doesn't appear to be a whole lot of stuff to get done here. It's probably going to be a safe or something around. Hanging on the wall is a large, gaudily framed painting. An impressionist landscape, inexpertly rendered in splotches of cheap acrylic. A nameplate in the frame reads, Harz Mountains 2011. There's nothing here. There's a bunch of ammunition over here. If we were playing one of the shadow runs, when you play in tabletop, you've got to be careful about your ammo. You've got to choose where you want it. Like, your bullet's got to be, like, in your pocket, or you got to have, like, a clip up in your vest. you got to be very careful about where you put things. Hanging on the wall is a large, gaudily framed painting. An unimaginative still life of some kitchen object sitting on a table. Aha. So that was 91612. There it is. Search Green Winner's room and we find a bundle of old documents. Inside the safe you find a bundle of old well-worn media discs. The words Watch Me have been hastily written on the back of the topmost disc. The disc labeled Watch Me looks almost new. The others are clearly much older and many of them are badly scratched. The last two discs in the bundle are stuck together and when you try to pry them apart the readable surface of the bottom disc peels away. Damn. Alright, well that would be that. As soon as you finish with the safe the nearby vid phone begins to ring. Dead Man Switch. Seeming like a little bit of deja vu here. Hey there, Chief. Don't hang up. I've got a proposition for you. A man with sideburns. Hell yeah. This is a man after my own heart right here. I'm listening. You've probably noticed that this building is under new management, right? And judging by the fresh corpses that I'm seeing strewn all over the hotel, I'm gonna guess that you don't like the new guys any better than I do. Well, I'd like to make you an offer. You help cover my escape and I'll get you into a secure vault on the top floor. Belong to a leader of the gang that used to run this place. Trust me, it's still secure. I set up the security protocols myself. The last Decker they brought in to take a crack at it came back out on a stretcher. They haven't found too many volunteers since then. So you're a Decker then? That'd be an understatement, Shum. More accurate to say that I'm THE Decker, in these parts at least. My handle in the Matrix is Blitz. Maybe you've heard of me? <laughs> I'm gonna lie, THE Blitz? The one and only, glad to be talking to a fan. You got my attention, what's in the vault? Gear, money, you know, lots of good stuff. Well, I'm a fan of good stuff, as are we all, so shall we go and grab it? Yeah, where do I need to meet you? Room 505 on the penthouse floor. Come rendezvous with me there and I'll take you to the vault. Well, this seems like a great place to break off the episode, so we found Blitz. That's the character that I was talking about. I don't want to do spoilers, but in the press release it had these four, well, these three, and then it had Blitz as well. And I really like the fact that they didn't use mercenaries in this game. You've got a party that runs with you where you know their backgrounds, you know their history, you know your story. That was a smart choice. Because that's a big part of what goes into Shadowrun, is learning all of your friends' backstories for their characters and things of that nature. Really getting close to the characters, I guess. My name is Splattercat, thank you for joining me here for another episode of Dragonfall. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow, and it's always a pleasure to be running in the shadows with you chummers. Take care out there.